whole idea behind what I had to say today was, was kind of a changing view of faith and doubt that I've noticed just in my lifetime. Um, I find, for one thing, I find, uh, and some of us older ones can know this, that uh, there's so many things that we talked about, that were talked about in the 60s that have sort of come to life now. Okay, I, I can remember so well hearing the chant, there are no absolutes. Everything is relative. Well, it was parlor talk then, it's practice now. Okay. And with faith and doubt, it's as if my whole point today was that doubt, is, doubt isn't something we should be ashamed of or we shouldn't dare talk about. As, as much as I was trying to say, but it, it shouldn't either be a, something we celebrate or suppose you have to have it in order to have faith. Because that is something I encounter a great deal. That if you don't pass through doubt, you can't really have strong faith. And I'm not sure I believe that. Uh, it isn't that a person can't go on to have strong faith. I'm just not convinced it's a prerequisite. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Questions you might have. How could Mother Teresa continue years upon the service and loving people and fulfilling the first and the second great commandment? while continually having doubt. Why would that not have been overcome at some point? The great story is her faith. In her case, as the man said that I quoted, her faith was she kept on keeping on. Why? Because there was an intellectual component to that faith, meaning I know that I'm doing what Jesus would have me do. I wish I were feeling better about it, but I know I'm doing what I should be doing. As in, so, just a little comment on that, is what I found in my life, is that most of us measure our spirituality on merely our obedience alone, when in reality, you can pridefully live the commandments. You can doubtfully... You can live legalistically. You can, you can live in a way that you think, I can save myself, essentially. That's right. So just the, just the main thing I, I like to point out with, with Mother Teresa and all this is just that your obedience alone is not what determines your spirituality, nor your faith. You cannot program the Spirit of the Lord. You can't manufacture it. You can't imitate it. I think it's one thing to feel the Holy Ghost and another thing to have the Holy Ghost. Not that they're apart as much as you can have the Holy Ghost and not feel it with the same intensity you think you ought to be feeling it. I think you can f sometimes you feel it with greater intensity than at other times. And I think there are therefore periods where we think we aren't spiritual, but we are. I think you, you're trying to keep the commandments. And one of the things that matters a great deal to you is you want the Spirit of the Lord to be with you all the time, to the extent that it can be. You're, you're, you're moving in that direction. And the more you do that, what begins to happen? The more you strive to keep that spirit with you. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to, make, you're going to have moments where you make mistakes and you, and you repent. But the more you strive to do that, what begins to happen through the years? The Holy Ghost forms our conscience. He educates our desires. He adjusts our wisdom. So that the day comes, you have to make a tough decision and you make it. You think you're making it according to your best wisdom and judgment, and you are. It's just that your wisdom and judgment has been well-schooled through the years. The question is, what do you, the doubt comes, it's there, it stays longer than an hour. How do you then move forward in faith when you have that mindset? Yeah, and how do you eventually get back to a position mm -hmm. of faith? I, I've had experiences in my life where I've been, I have been in periods of doubt for years. I have been in very strong positions of doubt. And I think it's interesting, I think of doubt a lot, when I was listening to your talk today, I thought of doubt a lot in the terms of trust, mm. is where I like kind of, how I kind of thought about it, like trust and fear. And so like there's, um, so like doubt, like kind of equates, one of the definitions you mentioned was like mistrust. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and I think in those moments you have to rely on the years of trust that you've already built, where it said, like Heavenly Father, like He helped me through that thing, and like I know that He knows what's best, and so it's like, and sometimes if you don't have those years of experience, it could be even harder. 
fact, it's, it's, it's why I used and focused on the word a little bit today, remember. One of the things people do often t- who are going through a period of doubt is make certain they don't forget what they have experienced in the past spiritually and try not to explain that away or reinterpret it. Realize it for what it was and say, well, I don't feel great now, but I remember very well having gone through this and th- I could not explain that away. Do you know what I'm saying? I keep a journal every day, and I have since high school, mm-hmm. and that's been good for me to remember all of those, oh, that's good. those experiences I've had. And when I'm going through a period of, of doubt and, mm-hmm. and questioning, then I will sit there and write about an experience that I had where I did feel the Spirit, and that usually helps me pull out of it again. Um, but sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it leads me down that path of thinking, well, I felt it then, but why don't I feel it now? Why can I not feel so now? What have I done wrong? And then that's... For some reason, like that remembering is also a struggle for me, like um, doing service. Yeah, and it's, often, and it's often why some people will then begin to reinterpret that past, you know. I, I thought about this too. I mean, let's just take Mother Teresa. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get nutty about this, but Mother Teresa, what did she do in terms of her doubt? She just kept on. Why? Because she knew it was the right thing to do. So there are times, I think, when we may not feel what we want to feel. In your case, the answers to all my questions. But what do you do? Number one, you you move forward. Again, it's already been said, but I want to re-emphasize it. He says that when you're not feeling this joy, that the true joy of the gospel always deals with other people, meaning service. And Elder Bednar talks about in the character of Christ, when in despair or when unfortunate circumstances happen, we normally tend to think inward, but rather Christ was always thinking outward. Yeah, that's fascinating. And that's something to reemphasize again, where rather than being stuck in our own situ- situation or circumstance, we go forward with faith by reaching out to others. Even when we're struggling, we help others. That's excellent. Throughout like the scriptures, we see all these prophets and people having their trials. And I think like every single time you can kind of see that they're not kind of wallowing in their self-pity or whatever, but they're rather like putting their faith in Christ. Like they know that eventually they're going to pull through it and they're going to be able to make it through because of like him. And they know that he is the one that that he understands them no matter what and he'll be able to pull them through. So I think just like like even some of the greatest people we know have gone through that. So mm-hmm. if we can like kind of take what they've been through and kind of apply it to our lives, like I think like learning from examples and like taking those, we can be able to um, maybe make it through our story. I love that statement that I quoted from David Steinmetz today. It's one of my favorites when he's talking about Mother Teresa. She trusted that eventually the band would strike up a polka <laughs> and the dance would resume, you know? Uh, and that's part of trust. We talked about trust. It's trusting that there's a God. He knows me. He loves me. And that I'm going to make it through this. You know, whether that's doubt or whether that's depression. As you begin to be born again, as you begin to be changed, you begin noticing a number of things about yourself. But you know, one thing you notice is you do reach that point where he said you find yourself crying out, you to God, you must do this, I cannot. And then you decide, he said, to turn everything over to the Lord. And then Lewis said, don't misunderstand me. I don't mean by that, you stop trying. He says, no, you keep trying. And this is one of my favorite lines from Mere Christianity. He said, no, you keep trying, but you're trying in a new way, a less worried way. Isn't that interesting? A less worried way. 